important about buying a home is the legacy. So uh, when I think about neighborhoods, uh, I think of a neighborhood as having two pieces, um, or two types of pieces. And the first one is uh, the sort of fixed things about a neighborhood. And with a place like View Park, uh, it's right there in the name where some of the fixed pieces are, you know, the view. Um, and the, and the park-like hillside, uh, the glorious old homes um, in the mid-20th century. You know, um... I think when the people first moved into the area, that they probably had no idea that eventually you were going to have 90% black community. Uh, just as, you know, when my parents first moved to Compton, uh, but we saw, because of block busting and, and, and other tactics, uh, we saw whole neighborhoods change almost overnight. And uh, using, you know, with realtors and bankers using fear to initiate that. Is there a way where, you know, to quote Rodney King, we can all get along and, you know, you basically have a stable, integrated community? So I, I think that, that that parallel is actually very, very interesting. Um, and this is, this is not to, obviously these processes are very different. Um, but when you say that when, when the first folks moved into those neighborhoods, they probably didn't foresee the changes that were coming ahead. Uh, on the other hand, the white families, I think, did. And that's why they, they tried so hard to keep the first black family out, because I think that they uh, were viewed that change as inevitable once it had started. And um, I, think that that's, I think that that's, obviously the moral weight is on the other side of the, the, the equation here when we think about gentrification. But do the first do the first white families who move into a gentrifying neighborhood expect it to flip completely? Um, Probably not. And I think that this this uh, how I would think about this from from you know my my sort of framework for what neighborhood change is. Um, I think there's there's maybe two paths to, to thinking about how you could stop it. One is to make a neighborhood less attractive to people who might like to move in. <laughs> um, I don't think that's going to be a popular uh, approach. I think that I think that in some communities, um, there's enough differences between the people who live there and the people who are trying to move in where this actually has some some purchase. That if you think of a low-income central neighborhood, if you if you make a, if you turn the road into bus-only lanes, so folks can't drive, um, is that going to make it less attractive to the gentrifiers? Yeah, and bus-only lanes are going to improve the lives of the folks who are there. Um, so in, in certain types of low-income central neighborhoods, I think that actually that, that stands a chance of, of helping. I don't think bus lanes in View Park are going are gonna to do much. Um, so, so if we can't think about making the neighborhood less attractive to newcomers, um, maybe there's ways to, to uh, try to make changes less disruptive, um, or just sort of encourage the community, strengthen the community ties that are already there, so that it's not that it's less attractive, uh, but that the neighborhood is particularly attractive um, to the social groups uh, who, who are already there. Mostly black, uh, but much less so than it was 15 years ago. And, in, and the white population has doubled, and the Latino population has doubled. And so then the big question, question is, is this, is this gentrification? Um, so when I, my baseline for thinking about gentrification before this week when I started thinking about View Park more, um, so there's a block near my house in Washington, D.C., uh, on H Street, if you know D.C., um, that has gone from 92% black 20 years ago uh, to majority white today. So it started out very similar to View Park in, in that regard, um, and now it's majority white. And so, so that change uh, was much more dramatic. The income change was more dramatic, too, that uh, in that neighborhood, the typical white family moving in, their income tripled over that period. So once again, no one, very few people's income triples. Uh, that's, that's just different people moving in. 
Um, and house values tripled as well. And so in my research, uh, which is on uh, displacement and gentrification, another, I think that was on there twice, um, shows that in, in these vulnerable neighborhoods, like in Washington, DC, uh, that the most vulnerable people within those neighborhoods uh, get absolutely get pushed out, um, which is not a surprise to anyone, but uh, you know, the, we do research because sometimes there is a surprise, and, and our research shows that on average, folks in that situation move out of their neighborhood five years sooner than they otherwise would have. That they typically, folks stay in their homes in the sample about 10 or 12 years, and people move out five years sooner. So that's absolutely displacement. Um, and so that's, what, that's my sort of baseline for thinking about gentrification. So what about View Park? Well, as we talked about, there's relatively high median incomes for the, the typical family. Um, most residents, about three and four, are homeowners. And, and so, in some ways, View Park, I think, is a little bit less vulnerable to the direct displacement that we talked about, the, the illegal evictions, um, a little bit less vulnerable for the typical family. Obviously, uh, experiences vary. Um, but that, at the end of the day, that displacement isn't the only thing in gentrification. We talked about um, a lot of the things on there, social and cultural uh, intrusion, um, the loss of community, the loss of a sense of belonging, um, those things, they don't care how, how much your paycheck is. They don't, they don't care at all. Um, they're gonna hit you no matter where you fall in the pay scale, if you're a homeowner, if you're a renter. Um, that transformation is, is, is gonna affect you. Um, and so when we think about it in View Park, does it look different than H Street in Washington? Sure. Um, and is this gentrification? I mean, I don't get to pick what words mean, but uh, all of the words that, that we're talking about up there, um, that's, that's, I mean, that's what it seems like, that's how I think about gentrification, and, and from looking into View Park, those are, those are if they haven't really necessarily, you know, there's maybe one of the starting phases uh, of it to some extent, but that's, that's uh, you know, that's the sort of picture I get from, from looking into it. Now, I'm from Baltimore, and I know what you're saying about seeing those families, those communities just overnight. We were the first family that moved into a row house in Emerson Village. Okay. And then overnight, it was like Sally and Becky was gone. <laughs> Seriously, they was gone. And then from this day forward, it's nothing but a black neighborhood there in Emerson Village. Man, it may have happened differently in other areas of Baltimore. The other thing someone mentioned about how the code enforcers are coming in your neighborhoods, they are gonna come in your neighborhoods and you guys have to band together as a neighborhood watch or a neighborhood uh, community and talk to each other. There's so many people who are losing their homes and won't even tell you, won't even tell you. And I know knocking on your door because I know you're losing your house because I get the reports, but you won't say anything. You're too embarrassed. You're too prideful. And who comes to get your house? So we have to come together through our com uh, neighborhood uh, communities that we have. I'm sure all you guys are a part of some type of uh, neighborhood uh, homeowner association. Not so much a homeowner association, but some type of community neighborhood meeting, right? That's where it has to start. 
it has to start there. We have to start talking to each other. We're not communicating with each other. But it seems to me that that's, that's the most hopeful way uh, to protect the community that View Park has built, is, is to make it so that uh, elsewhere, that there's, that there's some amount of sharing, there's some amount of making room for folks. Um, and if that's the case, then, then maybe there's less pressure, fewer of those folks that are the track. The emotion that we all feel about this and not, you know, obviously we, we love our homes and, and that part, but it really is the painful um, potential of the loss of community in this area. But it's all about the money. That's all it is. It's about the money, you guys. I'm not bad at you.